things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. So tonight, the truth is going to be unfiltered and full of flavor. Please welcome Dana McCool and Eric Ramundo, bringing you the smoking truth. Happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. It's a little more subdued uh, with my dear friend Dana McCool. Uh, she's a little bit under the weather after some stuff today, um, but just that relating to her uh, her health. But anyways, other than that. Um, <laughs> uh, let, me, let me interpret the Republican speak for you. I had a lung biopsy today because I have a little situation going on there because of my cancer. So mm. I had a lung biopsy this morning. Mm. And then they went under general anesthesia, and they told me that when I came out, I was talking about podcast that I needed to So speaking of being podcast. under, before I get into the where you can follow us, <laughs> I'll put a little disclaimer on today's for today's show. Uh, some folks are a little hot under the collar, and so just be prepared. Republicans speak for Dana's not, piss. Not, not, uh, most of these are not expressed by me. However, I will chime in Republican from time to time. speak for I don't want to <laughs> condone anything that McCool's about to say. Um, but that said, hey, listen, don't forget, everybody, you can follow us on Facebook um, at the Smoking Truth Podcast. You can also follow us. Don't forget to get the, uh, hit the like button and just subscribe to us as well over there, too, because I'll... We'll put the stuff over there on the, the link to um, over to YouTube. Then YouTube, it's um, The Smoking Truth. Don't forget to follow us over there. That's where you get to the videos. You can follow us on the podcast, obviously, all the major ones. You know them all, Spot, uh, Spotify, Podbean, uh, Apple, whoever's out there. Just you follow it over there. And don't forget, you can catch us on Twitter as well. We're not as uh, big on Twitter, but we're, we'll, we'll get there little by little. We are trying to make sure all the shows get up there as well. So you can catch us at Truth Smoking. And then you, got, you can send us emails, uh, gonzo at... The Smoking Truth dot live. God, you're so good. I'm trying. You're Anyways, good. You're good uh, and sometimes we understand that you want to keep it private uh, in case you get some sort of public record request, which we're not going to because <laughs> this is private. But hey, I get it. You can always just give us a call. Are you fucking shoot segwaying? Us a you're segwaying, aren't you? No, just yeah, you uh, are. <laughs> you're segwaying for throw, me. Throw it, throw it. Uh, you can just do whatever you guys got to do just to get a hold uh, of us I, and let us know. So, uh oh. Oh my God. Uh oh. Do you know what that was? What was that? That was the last of my fucks leaving the building. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That's going to be probably the, uh, that's going to set the tone for the show today, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm running hot in from uh, Tally uh, from the week that was, but anyways, and so I, I got a quick turnaround to hurry up. I say basically hi, bye to my, my wife and my kids and then get get out of Dodge again. Grab but, Elvis. Um, yeah, grab Elvis and go. So, uh, yeah. but uh, we made some time for the show for today. Um, so here we are. And uh, with that said, uh, Dana, let me know. So you're not smoking. I do have a twisted, uh, this uh, twisted reserve real from, uh, from Romeo and Juliet and mm -hmm. uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo and Juliet anyways. And so it's, uh, I've had this a small, there's a smaller version of this one I've had before and I liked it. So I saw it upstairs at the uh, smoking lounge with nice. the cigar hustler folks and the family. I'm not so even faking today. I don't even have a blow up lover today. Good. All right. Well, you yeah. do you then. Don't worry I'm about it. I'm doing what the doctor says. Got it. <sighs> so, All right. Yeah. With that said, Dana, take it away. <sighs> Listen, I'm going to be subdued but pissed at the same time. There are a mm. couple of things that I am very solemn about this week. Mm. <clears throat> Usually when I get solemn and serious about something rather than it just blowing off steam. Okay. That's a nod to you, Elbert. <clears throat> rather than just blowing off steam, I have some really concerning stuff going on. Okay. First thing I want to talk about is Jason Broder's bill, God, SB 1316. And now <coughs> Florida. Dead. It looks like it's <clears throat> dead on arrival. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. <clears throat> yeah. We have now folded Florida in with apartheid South Africa, the Iron Curtain, USSR, Zaire, and socialist Ethiopia. Welcome to the nastiness. That, I've heard, I've heard some of the, I've heard some of the commentary. <laughs> yeah. This is the stupidest thing. I, and you know what? Here's my problem with yeah. this. <clears throat> Not only is it a waste of time <clears throat> and a waste of legislative resources, it's self-serving. You need that man at self-will run riot. You know, when you have the speaker and the governor disavowing and saying, I don't know what you're talking about. And for once, I'm going to... And I know, don't fall off your chair. I'm going to yeah, hold okay, you. Okay, I guess. For one, I'm going to support the speaker and the governor on this contention. <laughs> oh, my God. That was, that was guys, uh -huh. folks, that was the earthquake I felt. <laughs> Hang on. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> because it is, they're both right. 
this is infringing and da dangerous territory. And I find that really <coughs> rich for Jason Broder to be introducing that bill because this man was a king of dark month. He barely escaped getting out of problems. You know what I'm talking about. You know, um, and that's what he's doing. He's making noise to cover his own ass, and it's chicken shit. He doesn't even have the galls or the balls to speak, <coughs> you know, about this. And everybody should condemn him, but you know what? They won't. I mean, the governor did, and the soft that's a soft step. You know what I mean? Wow. The speaker did. And, I, you know, I just can't get behind it. That's the same thing, too. If you look at HB 991, same thing also. Alex oh, the Andrade, one we Pensacola, you know what I mean? Which, uh, the one about the, uh... Same thing. The, with the, the whole de ending the Democratic Party deal? No, that, no, no. You know? This is the same thing. This oh. is kind of like SB 1316. Okay. All right. Also, SB <coughs> 1220, as far as it goes for Florida libel and defamation. I'm going to... Um, let me do this, because I still have First Amendment rights. Fuck you, Jason Broder. Mm-hmm. That's a pussy move, and I'm going to say it as plainly as I can. I'm calling you a pussy, so go ahead and sue me for saying that. <coughs> because that's a waste of the people's time. It's an insult to the people. It's an infringement on anyone's First Amendment rights. And how dare you do that after rigging elections and all the bullshit people that you are involved with introduce these bills. It's a sham, and it's fucked up, and it's stupid. Same thing to Alex Andrade, especially after paying InfoWars $37,000. You want to get into that, so... Well, listen, you know I, what I mean? I'm just serious. I will. To what I will tell you is I'm going to walk a very fine line over here and just yeah, tell you okay. that I am going to. Uh, I, I do think that um, uh, uh, bill slots could be used better um, instead of some of this stuff. Uh, I don't. Uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't care for it. I think there's better things we could be doing with our time but you know as is everybody's you know the thing it, about it, the redundancy it, it is, is running a fool's errand when you are running staff and you're running my tax dollars doing this kind of bullshit you know what i'm saying let me just go ahead and put it i've been really trying not to cuss yeah, but this I get kind it. of thing is infuriating I, get it. I know you're wasting talented people's time i'm sure yeah. the staff some staff and 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 aides were like what is going on here what what am i wasting my time doing and you know what it's disingenuous it is cruel and unusual punishment to have people run these when people get off on their own platforms. And we're going to talk about that later as far as local Deltona city government, mm. because I'm not going to shy away from that subject. I mm -hmm. so I be talking about that. Yeah. Watch the commission meetings. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. So Jason Broder, when you get done with your ghost candidates and all of that other stuff, you know, stop being a hypocrite, man, a hypocrite. Mm. Mm. I, I really, I really hate that stuff. A hypocritical crap, you know, yeah, um, I, I don't know all the details that go into all this stuff sometimes and just all the – I know there's a lot of allegations that are being thrown out there. Um, and I'll just say that once again, I, I think they – I don't think a bill like this needed to be filed, um, just my personal opinion. And uh, even the one with the, with the whole issue of the Democratic Party, once again, I just kind of go, okay, it's, but it, Eric, it's a bit the of needling. Line where, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something. As a, as a human being, you're kind and compassionate always, and I've always known you to take the high road yeah. on anything. Sometimes, man, you got to get a little more. You have to have be a little more terse so in your condemnation. And I understand having to walk the line because of your job and everything. But if Republicans don't stand up and stop this kind of bullshiggity, right, well, introducing the stupid I shit and can get to work, man, it doesn't do us a service. You have uh, you have the House and the Senate. You have the power. We know that. We know that you have the power, but with great power comes great responsibility, and you're not doing even NPAs, yeah. let alone saying fuck you to Democrats. And, and I'm not saying that that's what the point yeah. is, Eric. I'm saying that there are NPAs getting the shaft, too, when we're spending time on stupid stuff like this, with smart people spending stupid time on shit like this. It is... This is not this serving the people, no, and I everyone agree. should condemn that. I listen, I listen. I will listen to what I'll tell you. <clears throat> What I'll say is that this is my challenge all the time with what we, what I see in our country just in general. It's always the tit for tat from both sides. Um, you know, when 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 Democrats take over in Washington, it's let's you know let's grind at, let's take away a couple things that you know that they'll never give the Republicans a chance to ever use. And I, I kind of go, well, remember that, because when they do take over, they're going to use the same thing against you guys. I agree. And so it happens back and forth, and I don't necessarily look. There is a bit of back and forth that happens in Tallahassee, and I've always been 
I've always felt somewhat proud of the fact that we don't get into it as much, but it is permeating little by little and the tit for tat stuff. And I don't think we need, we need to be doing that. This um, isn't even a tit for tat, Eric. What this is, is a power hungry fucker that can't see past their own ego to understand that this is wrong. How is this good for anybody? Well, it protects. Well, I call it. It protects I, yeah, people but from it. I know, basically, but what this does is it stifles people's free speech. I call it to for tat, and I'll tell you the reason Stupid. why. I call it to for tat because when countering I, the woke society. When I is that said what it no, is? no, when I listen, when I saw the bill drop, I already knew that bill was going nowhere. Now, the fact that the governor and the speaker you know, obviously condemned it, you know, listen, I'm very, I'm very happy about that because it didn't, but I knew it wasn't going to go They anywhere. didn't condemn it, though. They just, what they did is they spoke softly around it. And, you know, in order, here's the thing. Yeah, here's but the thing. I would have given a little bit of modicum. Oh, <coughs> that was like Randy Fine calling an elected yeah, official a whore. But listen, okay. but no, listen, I hear you. But let me tell you something, Dana. So I always go back to this. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand your voice. But understand this, even folks, and if you want to do that, that's fine, but I'm just telling you, even folks within your party, both parties do this, you will never, ever, ever see them coming out hardcore the way you may want them to. If it's a Democrat on a Democrat, they will never do that. And Republicans oh, I'm about will, to do and, that today. And Republicans will do that. And I'm just saying that, so I have always chosen, and some people call it crazy, being a little bit of a peacemaker, but I've always chosen to take a little bit more of the high road and just saying, look, I just respect it. I understand the fact that I respect I understand the fact that it happens on both sides, so I'm going to reserve too much commentary on that. Um, okay. There's obvious reasons I have, but I will just say this, is that I do believe that um, our taxpayer dollars could be served in a better Here, way. Here's so. the thing. Let me ask you this. Yeah. <clears throat> what he's, in essence, doing is he's asking to ban, and he's, he's he is challenging and he is saying that if you mention the governor, yeah. if you mention the legislator, if you mention <coughs> the commission on ethics, anything where his sensibilities get offended, then we're going to go after you. Yeah. Why but did he choose those in I, particular? Know, because he doesn't want anybody talking about Daddy Ron. He doesn't want anybody bullying the legislator, which is packed full of what right now? Republicans. He doesn't mm -hmm. want all of that. But yet within his own party, he wouldn't condone the speech of a state representative, Randy Fine, when he called a, a female a whore. Yeah, i listen. So that's hypocritical. Listen, I'll, like I said, I'll just, uh, uh, look, it, these things happen from time to time. I think it's always incumbent upon whoever's in power to make sure that you be very careful with that responsibility of the amount of power that you have. Um, I know, listen, there is a, there's a common, there's something that gets said in Tallahassee all the time, and I don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to it, although I kind of understand a little bit on some level, but I'm just, it's not my way of playing things. Um, you know, look, they, they'll complain that, you know, for a hundred some odd years, Democrats took over and took control and had, and, and, you know, and did the worst they possibly could to Republicans in the Florida House. And that obviously, you know, we're talking about, you know, sticking Republicans in the bottom, in the basement, never letting them come up, all kinds of nonsense where now we give office spaces and, you know, actual suites to, to Democrats. So that's what Republicans are doing. So it goes back and forth, and just once again, that's why I call it the tit for tat, because this is one of these things that just happens. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> anyways, that, I, just I, want everybody under, I just want everybody to understand that. I'm just trying to, it's once again, I'll just say this. It's not the best use of taxpayer dollars. And I, I will also say this, that I do believe that um, it is a slippery slope, because while I think in the bill they talked about getting paid, to me, I go, but if you start that path, <coughs> then when does it turn to not being paid? Yep. Um, and, and depending on who's in power, right? So let's say Republicans lose. Well, they already got it in the books that you can't, you know, if you're paid. What happens to Democrats? And my Republican friends, I'll say this. What happens to Democrats get into power and say, you know what? I don't want Republicans coming after me, so forget about the pay. We're just going to go ahead and go all the way and just say well, blockers can't do anything. Yeah. And that's th those are the slippery slopes that yep. I have Democrats who get on me about it sometimes. I got some Republicans, and I always remind them that, listen, I try to be as limited government. I try very hard. Mm -hmm to be consistent, but it's also, for me, it's always about the slippery slope. You name the issue. I don't care if it's abortion. I don't <coughs> care if it's gun rights, Second Amendment rights, <laughs> everything. Yeah. Uh, either side of the aisle, there's always, for me, the slippery slope, and I do understand we have to put guardrails sometimes in society, but then it's incumbent upon us to, as as regular citizenry, just to be mindful of, I don't mind going a little bit, but we need to pay attention to how far it goes, because people will use that and say, oh, we did it then, there's precedence, we can go We can go a little further now, and that's what I worry about, so. Anyways. Yeah, when do we when do we turn the corner between serving the people and self-serving? You know, <sighs> it's, it's, it's politics, man. I, yeah. I hope it gets better. I, there are people out there who are trying. Um, it gets a little difficult because of the, the way the power structure is set up yep. uh, on either side of the aisle, and it, it, it does get 
very concerning. And so we'll see what happens. But there are some folks who are trying to do the best they can under their under what's given and to us. So. <coughs> Listen, if I'm and I think there's on both sides. I think there are those yeah. on both sides who are trying the best they can, um, right. moderates right. And, and whatever on, on either side who are just trying to say, wait a minute, we need to just take it. And, and some and some libertarians who are just trying to say, hey, we need to be very careful where we go with some of this stuff. So. Yeah, I agree. That so yeah. we're we're sounding the warning bell because yeah. it is very, <coughs> it's very restrictive. It's very scary. It's yeah. like going into I don't know some what society is barreling yeah. into right now. And I also want to encourage Tom Leak to answer his emails or have staff answer his emails. You know, he's kind of he's going to be running and aspiring for a higher office. And that oftentimes help what happens is that you get on your own personal platform and you forget about the people. And answering emails is important. Um, I'm remiss in doing that sometimes. Um, you know, mine is I look into something, I go out there and follow up. I'm not as great at follow up as I should be, and I'm trying yeah. to be better about that. But even <coughs> even acknowledging a constituent, so I know somebody, I know two somebodies that emailed and never got a peep pack, not even from a... Um, an assistant at whatever mm -hmm. you know what I mean and um, I just say it would be my word of advice to get off the high horse and back in the camp where the people are you know it's easy when you go riding off on your own horse to for forget who you're serving and not answering an email is up there it gives the message to people that you know I don't really care what you're saying so yeah, I'm gonna, I mean I'm it's gonna all advise uh, that you do that yeah I hear you it's all part of the constituent work that should be getting done and it happens from time to time and listen i'll, I'll be the first to admit that it, it, there's an occasional email when then we got to get a call a second time and you're like oh and listen and then you and then i'm on the phone sometimes going hey i'm very very sorry because i know the email box is getting inundated with a lot of you especially this time of year because what happens and i think the emails probably came a little sooner than this time of the year but anyways uh, it's not me trying to make an excuse um, but i do know what happens from time to time and so i would just <coughs> say i think it's come upon all of us to do yeah. A better job a better to job. respond to re respond to the public as much as if best you're doing that if you're filling your time with doing that mm. you don't have time to introduce stupid fucking bills and waste time if you're doing the work of the people you don't have the time to be doing that one, other one, bullshit one could make that argument <laughs> one a lot could make that argument so yeah. <clears throat> i'm gonna fly right past that i'm gonna All get right. into the obvious <clears throat> i read mark barker mm -hmm. with great enthusiasm this week and um you know i don't always agree with him yeah i respect him and respect his finger on the pulse. You can't. Yeah. If it, you can say whatever you want to say about Mark Barker, but he pays attention. Yeah. You know, and he has gives a he gives a very um, distinct voice to the people. And he definitely has a perspective. Yes, he has a perspective. So. <clears throat> yeah. So I want to say that. So something I, <coughs> I want to address is what happened in Deltona. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> this past week. Yeah, I saw the I saw the video this week. <laughs> I saw the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I want to answer because wow, I've that's all I'm going to say is wow. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to go to you as first of all um, a legislator. And when I say legislator, we all know what your job is, but we also know that you are a constituent. Mm -hmm. We know that you understand about local and state government, county government. Mm -hmm. So you have credibility that way. People know that you're going to call it like it is. So I don't think your favoritism. I think you're speaking plainly. And so I'm just going to go back over this and. This is pers this is the disclaimer is that this is my take on it. Yep. I don't speak for anybody on the mm -hmm. Deltona City Commission. Yep. I speak for myself only. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, I just want to say that first of all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, it's never my goal to be disrespectful mm. when I speak my truth, but um, I try to abide by <coughs> my tenets, what mm. what I believe, and what I believe effective government should be about, and it should always be about the people. When it ceases being about the people, then what you get is a bunch of power-hungry people breeding contempt for the people, and I think that that's sad. So right now we have a bunch of self-will run riot, <coughs> and I'm going to state that plainly, under the guise of being good governments, mm -hmm. and it's not. So I want to talk about what happened. Yeah. <coughs> so <coughs> Monday night, Deltona City Commission voted on the city attorney. Mm -hmm. I think that it's been a dog and pony show from the very beginning. Probably has. That's what it seemed like to me. <laughs> it has. I think that it was an exercise in futility, and I think that the worst service that it did is giving people false hope that they would have a say in what goes on in their government with their um, with their officers, with their charter officers. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that, first of all. Second of all, I want to apologize that we fucked you people because, in essence, that what that's what we did. Um <coughs> We didn't give the process due process, 
And for that, I'm sorry. So I'm telling you from my heart to yours, I apologize that you got screwed over yet again and that we didn't listen to you. Um, I can't say we because I voted um, a different way. I was enraged <coughs> by what happened and ended up walking out of the city commission meeting. I saw that. I've yep. never done that before. Um, but I literally <coughs> thought that I was going to throw up on the dais, and that's mm -hmm. why I left. Yeah. I didn't leave because I couldn't keep my emotions in check. Yeah. I left because my emotions be betrayed me, and I really did feel like I was about to get sick on the dais. So I'll tell you what. So let's stop there for just a second. So when I saw the whole thing kind of playing out, and what I'll tell you is this. Um, I want everybody to understand something. I think a lot of elected officials try to be as – transparent as possible and, and what and I say that why <clears throat> I think it's I think we have to be very careful on where we go this is my I guess my opinion then how far you want to go with being overly transparent what I mean by that is it does being overly transparent mean then does it paralyze you somewhat right because oh we want to be transparent we want to be transparent and I get all that and trust me I want good governance but that said, and I, that's what I always worry about when I see everybody talking about, I want to be super transparent and say, look, don't dwell on it too much. Look, you just do your thing. You did it. Move on. Move on to the next topic and subject, and let's go. Let's get to, you know, to the business of the city. That said, my understanding is, is that everybody agreed to go a certain way. At least that was the conversation, right? We want the public involved in this, that, and the other. If you did not want the public involved – then you should have just said, hey, this is the process we're going to use, and then that's it. We've done that three times now with yeah. the charter, with the city manager, yeah. and don't uh, open up with that the can, Don't officer. open up that, quote-unquote, for lack of a better term or phrase, don't open up that can of worms if you don't want it opened up, or don't mm -hmm. open up that Pandora's box. Yep. If you don't want the public as engaged, which could muddy sometimes at times, right? Uh, I'm not saying, uh, and please, I, I want people to just take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. My I'm trying to make a point here. If you don't want the public as involved because you think it could delay things a little bit, okay, then fine. Then, then move on and it, it is what it is. Because I, as always told, I, I have always told you, I elect you all to kind of make that the, that decision because I don't have all the time in the world to pay attention to everything that happens adult, in the, within Daltona City politics. I'm trusting you all to do that. that Bad said, move on your part. Yeah, and so and so, what I'll just tell you is that well, no, because that's just that's the style of government I have. I don't have time to pay attention to every little thing. I do pay attention to a lot, but the problem, you know, the point is, is that that's why I left you individuals. If that was the case, and we would, then we should do like election by like some sort of computer machine. Why even have elected officials? Which I completely disagree with. That's, I think it's one of the reasons why California got screwed up over the years. They do all these referendums, and it's a, it's a bunch of nonsense. And so that said, if you're going to include the public, if that's what the goal is to do then you need to commit to that and hold to that. The minute you shy away from that, man, it, We're just, liars. it just sets a bad tone for the people. They get disgusted by that stuff. I, and even if it's only just the 30 people in the audience, and I know what the comments that get made, I've even made them over here sometimes. Hey, we got to be careful how much we placate to just a few that come there. But they do have they do have some <laughs> concerns I think we should at least on some level acknowledge. you know. But, but for the 30 people there, they're walking out of there disgusted. And then what's going to happen is they're going to go back and they're going to talk to a lot of different residents and say, my God, this city. And it just seems corrupt because I've also heard folks call for like, well, we need to do an audit. Look, folks, I don't think we need an audit of City of Daltona. Okay. Do I think that we've probably done some dumb stuff over the years? Yeah. That, hey, we'll chalk it up to being dumb. Either incompetent you know, city officials at some point in time or incompetent, you know, uh, you know, city elected officials at some point in time. That's what that comes down to. I, my hope is that we move in a better direction moving, uh, moving forward, yeah. but um, the, I don't, we don't need all we don't need all that. What we do need to focus in on is moving forward. But when you do things like this, it just man, it sets a bad tone. And then, and to your point, yeah, the residents look at us going, oh "My God, they lied to us once again. again." And that's all that gets perceived out yep. there. And for most folks, perception is reality. That's you know we're human beings in the, the day, right? In politics, we know that perception is reality. So we through all these, we do all these attack mail pieces and this because we're trying to create a certain vision mm -hmm. on either my candidate or against the other individual, whatever it is. And when they do that and they lie, or at least it appears that they lied, and they don't commit to what they're going to follow through on, then the residents walk away feeling disgusted. Yep. And, and 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 listen, and so I don't blame them. I will I will comment on this one thing. <laughs> so I've watched the city attorney, <coughs> the, the sit-in for the firm that was just released. Wait, can you? Marcia. I want you to go back over that in detail. That one detail. Yeah. We have a firm. Yeah. That a commissioner brought up firing. Yeah. Let's fire him. Yeah. Let's fucking fire him. Yeah. So what do we do? We fire him. 
But then that same commissioner, let's hire the biggest, largest billing partner of that firm. Which so I, go ahead with your story because so I just want to make sure that that fucking point I, I is will, known. Which I will know. So listen, it's, <coughs> a, it's a, so I saw that and I go, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a fucking minute. Say I it. Wait a fucking we, minute. Yeah, wait, wait, all right. Wait, wait a, a fucking, fucking minute. minute. So let me tell you about this Momo move that just happened, okay? So we have the largest billing individual, which I will tell you this right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think she's incompetent. I looked at her a number of times in city commission meetings. I'm just sitting there going, duh, 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 I, 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 I don't know. I, duh, I, duh, I, duh. And I know I'm sounding like Donald Trump a little bit, and I shouldn't do that to people, but that's what I heard from her, all right? And I'm like, duh, 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 duh. Dude. A duh, a duh, a duh. You sound like a friggin' Momo on TV. And everybody's watching you. And you're supposed to be the professional city attorney. Either you got something wrong with you, then God bless you. Move on then. Or you're just that incompetent. So here we go. Now we're making a motion very quickly. And I remind folks, when you see motions coming very quickly like that, there is something going on behind the scenes. That's all I'm going to leave right Predestined. there. Predestined. I'm going to leave right there. You don't create these quick little motions unless something's going to happen. And what I will just say is that I am expressing only my concern because I think she's in, she's incompetent. I'll use another word, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna refrain right now. She's incompetent. I don't think she's the right person. Even if you didn't want to go to the other two firms and get some, then find somebody else. But there were two other capable, very very capable firms, Cobb Cole. I know Mark Mark Watts was representing, and then the other one, uh, Fishback, Fishback. Which, that All represents right. a couple of other cities in Central Florida. Why not them? Unless some, unless folks are looking for a patsy. That's the way I look at it. I've seen this I've seen this shit before. And I'll tell you why. Because Dennis Mulder did it. We're doing it to Randy Fine. De too. Dennis, Dennis Mulder did it, right? Mm -hmm. I hate to bring his name up again, folks, but I remember that with George Shavado and the former city clerk who became the, the city manager and all that nonsense going on. Republicans, we hated this nonsense when Dennis was doing it. Now I don't know everybody's party affiliation up on that city dais up there. But I'm assuming it's a mix of whatever. And I'm just saying that now I see the same nonsense being played out all over again where we're using Deltona. What are we going to learn? Anytime you, as a diet, sit there and look, are looking for puppets, as you guys, and I know that was the comment that was, I think, Brandy White said it. And I'm, I'm not she one let for, me hold her puppet. I'm not one for quoting to Brandy White. But my point is You're going to be. Yeah, I, I feel like I am, though. So touche to, to Brandy, then. She got me going on this. I'll just say this, that... We've been through this once before, and people complain. Former city commissioners complain. They hated it. Mm -hmm. And I, former city commissioners. And now I feel like we're doing it all over again, and I'm pretty sure there are former city commissioners in their hands in the mix in some of this. So you complained about it once before. Oh, but if it works to your benefit now, now it's okay on some level. Mm -hmm. Dude, hey, let's be consistent with some of this stuff. Deltona, we are not going to move forward as a city. Now, look, there are projects on the boat, on, on, I mean, on, on, on the table. I think the, the city manager is, is I think he's going to continue to do a, a, a good job. Once again, my, my issue wasn't so much with the city manager. <coughs> I, I, I told you before, I would have voted for, for Chisholm. Um, my thing was, is just the, the way we, that was, we, we, went up, we went about it, which is, hey, if you're going to offer to the public an opportunity for input, then do so and then follow through with it. But my point is, is that, yes, we got projects on the books. We've got to get those things moving. I understand that. Hey, you did the one-year contract. That's fine. Um, yes, I do believe we should. I think you and the mayor both had said, and like, kudos to the mayor for, for talking about it some more as well, too, for saying, hey, look, we got to get a time certain because I know that's something that was important to him because I think he's feeling a little bit the pressure as well, too. Like, hey, you know, I got elected a certain way, and, you know, and it's uh, my hope is it wasn't to play games either behind the scenes, you know what I mean? But my point is, is that you got elected to go ahead and do something. And so now I think he's feeling a little bit of frustration. I think he's doing the best he can because he wants to seem collegial. He wants to come off as being you know, a little bit above board, which I understand completely, 100% mayor, I get it. But I also know that's probably gotta be frustrating because I know he was not a fan of Marsha. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a fan, beyond the folks that are just come up there. And I just, I go, my God. I even commented privately to some other folks. I just go, oh my God, dude, she looked bad on TV. She's just horrible. And so then I have to sit there and kind of go, why would you go with the same individual that people were just clamoring about or just looks like a fool on, t uh, on, on when, when you're watching city commission meetings, and then all of a sudden now, then you got reputable firms there. And I'm willing to pay up. Let me be the first to say, <laughs> I'm not always a big fan of all these little contracts, but I get it happens. And then sometimes they need to happen because, hey, it's either the contract or you pay for an employee and you got to pay benefits or other things. And sometimes it becomes much more expensive. But I'm willing to pay up <laughs> to get something better <laughs> than what we got. And I'm telling you, folks, I get tired of defending Deltona. 
Uh, I think there's a lot of good people in the city, man. There are, and there are some folks trying to do a lot of good community uh, leaders um, on the nonprofit side and <coughs> others trying to do the best they can. And, you know, and I think some are just humming along and hoping for the best always to Deltona. But I feel like the city, we keep going over this nonsense over and over. Like, we don't learn from our past. That's what kills me. Like, I see other cities moving forward because they're learning from some mistakes they've made in the past, and I hope that Chisholm has, you know, can, can kind of cor course correct with some of these folks, but I just feel like we're going down the same path again, and I don't think it's gonna happen because there are too many players up on that dais, and people are angling either publicly or behind the scenes, and they want things a certain way, and that's just, I'm gonna call it the way it is, so uh, it, it's, it's a little disappointing. She was not, she definitely was. She, she was, wasn't there. She was not, and then the worst part is, <laughs> The worst part is, is when you're awarding these these RFPs or these RFQs, right? These re, you know requests for proposals and requests for uh, quotes or whatever you call them, right? And then you, uh, a contract's about to, about to be rewarded, or award. I'm sorry, awarded. It is usually very, very, very customary, unless the individual. Unless you're Deltona. Yeah, or unless <laughs> the individual or the company that that or they the, already know the they're in. Their company representative is for some reason just can't make it because of a child. They already thing, know whatever. they're in. But in many cases, if they do not show up, once again, folks, if they do not show up, there's a, c a good chance that they were probably told already behind the scenes that they already got it. Yeah. Because all three parties should have been there. Because that's usually customary. Mm -hmm. Even, and I'll tell you this. I know, and I've heard of times when I know, you kind of understand, you kind of know where the award's going to go. You can kind of see the writing on the wall. And guess what? The individual still shows up because why? At least, Jesus. At least make it. Make it look like, you know, something. To not even show up, I'm sitting there going, my God. Wow, that's some balls on somebody. You know, that's, hey, lady, you got some balls. I'll tell you that right now. <clears throat> so, listen, I know the commission, they could care, probably care less what I, what, what I have to say. Um, and uh, that's fine. But I'm just going to tell this. And I know the city commission wants to move forward in some direction. But I'm just going to tell you right now, it's complete horse crap with you guys in some level are doing you don't like it tough shit come talk to me i'll be more happy to tell you right to your face but i'm going to tell you this right now marcia was the worst <laughs> she would have been like the bottom of the bottom of the barrel for me to pick after what i've seen knowing that you got man two damn good firms there <coughs> yeah two other choices you could have picked much more qualified i felt than sh her I, I think she's at the end of her rope is my personal opinion this is not ageism folks this is just my from what I've seen over the years of her, that I think she's at the end of a rope, and I would have preferred someone else. I would have been willing to pay up for it. So well, just simple I, as I'm that. gonna. I'm so gonna I, that's go. mine. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> I'm gonna go factual now. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Give me the smoking truth. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the smoking truth, and I will have it unfiltered and full of flavor. Okay. That thing. Yeah. All right. Because yeah, because I don't always know all, all the details. I can, just, I can only tell you what I'm perceiving, because I'm guaranteeing the public's probably perceiving that in some way, and I'm also giving them a little insight as to what I'm seeing politically. I've seen this before, so this anyway, is sta ahead. this yeah. is a statement of fact. Uh, yeah. Back when John Peters was still city manager, yeah. I spoke to him, and he'd probably back it up. Yeah. I spoke to him about my concern about legal representation. Yeah. I felt the billing statements were antiquated mm -hmm. and juvenile, and th it's the detail that speaks volume about people's larger picture. Yeah. It's 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 the nuances, I think. And I spoke about that. I spoke about the propensity for lawsuits. Mm. I spoke about my concern for settlements um, that was going on behind the scenes. Uh, <clears throat> just overall, my dissatisfaction with legal representation. And talked about what the best course forward would be. And, and then after John Peters uh, <coughs> left the, the city because of circumstances, and I won't even get into the weeds there about that. Mm. Um, I spoke again to the acting city manager about my concerns as well. Mm. Acting city manager <coughs> um, gave me feedback. Mm. And what I talked about was doing what was best for the city as far as how do we introduce this concept and how do we talk about that because the people that always showed up had expressed dissatisfaction also. And I said, what is the more civil thing to do here? You know, what do we do here? And how do we approach this? And, and, and after talking with the city manager, it was decided that um, I would wait and ask about that, not during the heat of elections, because I didn't want it to seem like um, electoral rhetoric. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because okay. yep. people are fast to jump on stuff like that and yeah. appropriate it for oh, yeah. poor voting. 
And I said that wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time when John Peters was leaving because it would seem convoluted also. Yeah. And so we said, I agreed to wait until it got closer to the time of the, the expiration of their contract to bring it up, mm. you know, um, f about four months or something like that, right, that we got closer. <coughs> and that <coughs> would be the most civil and peaceable way to do it as we decided how we were going to approach replacing them. Mm. You don't quit a job without having one, and that follows that tenant that yeah. you need some understanding of what you're going to do to replace the vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, <coughs> lo and behold, we have a commissioner, that brings it up under comments again yeah. instead of being on the agenda to move it properly. Yeah. To which I would say, uh, okay, we've already talked about that, and it was my understanding that we were going to do it a certain way, but you know they run on their own power, so it is what it is, and now it's out there. You yeah. Know? Marshall is the largest billing component of the firm that we decided to fire. Yeah. Okay. I saw that. Not I only that, she was city manager while being attorney, while th all of that stuff was convoluted. The mm. billing was convoluted. Now we have who's going to write the contract, who's going to be the third party sitting in on the contract. And we invite some pretty prestigious law firms, which would have done a couple of things. Mm. Okay. <coughs> it would have removed everybody's all about getting rid of the old and into the new. And that's not what we've done here, to which I find hypocritical. <laughs> Insanity. To serve. Insanity, Dana. <laughs> I think everybody knows what the definition of insanity is. <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a, a different result. And I just kind of go, insanity. But anyways, go ahead, my dear. <laughs> well, it, it, it doesn't ser serve a good purpose, you know. And um, we have more of the same. And we had some very prestigious law firms, to which I apologize to them, yeah. you know, to say this, that... Um, <coughs> Cobb Cole, I apologize for you being part of the dog and pony show. That was certainly not my intent. Mm. I respect you, and um, I'm sorry that you got folded up in that. Same thing with Fishback and Dominic. Yeah. <coughs> sorry that you got folded up with that, you know. But it is what it is. I don't agree with it, you yeah. know. Uh, I don't know, brother. Yeah, I just, to me, it was just, it was just all weird and strange. I, just, I watched the whole thing, and I was just kind of like, it was just weird and strange with, with the way it played out. And I just was like, you know, City, are we doing this again, man, really? Like, we've been down this road before. I remember, God, it wasn't that far. It wasn't that long ago. Dennis Mulder, George Shavado, and who was that Momo that was the city manager at the time? She was a puppet, too, man. I'm like, God. And I just sat there and go, oh, my, here we go again. And I'm just like, and trust me, and this is no reflection on, uh, well, I'm not going to – this is no reflection on Mr. Chesney because I by no means – I look, whether people disagree or agree, there's tremendous respect there for what he's accomplished over his over his tenure. And I know there are people are – look, and I'll say this too about his contract. I do believe that you all should have been given the exact number. It's not that hard to pull up. We all – we can all – we you know, we can – we can, you know, we can uh, quantify exactly what the contract's going to be. And I know everybody's talking around 300000 It's probably in that general range with all the benefits and stuff, which I kind of go look at. I know some people are harping on that in the audience. I don't really care as much. But that said, the numbers could have easily been given to you guys right away. It's it's not hard to quantify what that number is, but whatever. Um, but so this is not a reflection on him by no means. I, I My hope is over next year things go smoothly with him um, so we can transition into something else. Um, there was another another comment being made from another city commissioner, um, uh, Jody Lee Stro Strozik. Listen. <coughs> May, and maybe he's thinking about it from a business perspective, so I'll at least give him that, that much. But the reality, though, is that as a charter officer, <clears throat> as a charter officer, you all hire and fire these charter officers, right? <clears throat> and so it's not up to Mr. Chisholm to find a deputy that you guys can all go, hey, this is the guy, this is good, the guy or gal we want. No, it doesn't work that way. You hire Mr. Chisholm, he hires a deputy who he feels is going to carry out the duties of what he wants for the vision that between what you all decide and what he decides is the vision we're going to move in. And that's it. When time comes, that individual is going to have to apply in the same fashion, go through the same process. That's the way it's always been. They can be interim, which is fine, but they still got to apply. And if in that time frame you guys like the individual, okay, then maybe there's something there. And instead of all the colluding, maybe <laughs> then you guys just figure out individually, hey, this is the person we want. But it just seems – but the problem is, is that he's already signaling – to everybody else out there, 
what he did was he just signaled to whoever's out there throwing their applications, the 500, 400 applications are out there, your application doesn't mean jack shit because as soon as Chesham finds his deputy, that's who we want anyways. We're going to move him to that spot. So why apply? Why apply? Okay. So get your shit together, buddy. I know that you're new with this. I get it. But you've been to enough city meetings. You've seen them before. You know how this thing plays out. You should know by now how it works. So, um, look, I'll, I'll give him a little bit, a little bit because he's brand new with this. But come on, man. I, I, he's, been, he's been paying attention long enough. And he's had city commissioner friends long enough, too, to know how this stuff is supposed to work. I want to so. speak to the fallacy of an argument, too, that when it come to the constituents' input. Yeah. Okay? I think that it's fucking rich, okay, that... We talk about the same 30 people that show up don't really represent the true voice of the people. Mm. When you're asking all of the residents to believe that one commissioner represents all 14,000 of their constituents in their district mm. or in the city. So I want us to think about that. The same holds true. Every person, there was surveys done online and they're at the event asking who would they have ranked to be the city manager. Marsha felt third mm -hmm. to everybody. All yeah. the people comments, all the people input online and otherwise, yeah. right? I think that online it was 66 people voted for Cobb Cole, mm -hmm. 16 for Vishback, and maybe one for Marsha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so don't use that argument on me that those people don't represent – a sampling if you're going to try to tell me to they do the and people so to believe that one representative can represent all 14 let me let, so let me let me clarify to make sure everybody understands this so if you own f if you represent 14,000 people in your district you won by a majority it's as simple as that those are cold hard facts you won your job now is to do the best you can to offer up meetings within your district so you can try and get as much feed what did i say to try and get as much feedback as you can some people are going to participate more than others that's a known fact and i just you can't just drag people out with the feedback you're given and with the information you're given as well as at, at, at the city level your job then now is to um, provide a vote that you feel best serves the city while taking into consideration some of the voices that doesn't mean you're going to be with them 100 percent that also that means that sometimes you may vote against some of these individuals because hey look i know what you are saying i'm going to keep it in i'm, I'm going to try to keep it in check a little bit i'm going to yep. watch it whatever the case may be so i want people to understand that that yes you represent 14,000 people um a lot of people you're not going to agree with and a lot of people are not going to agree with you all you can do as a city commissioner is take the vote that you feel is best at that moment in time with the information being provided to you, that means that I encourage folks, try to go out there and, and go visit your residents. Talk to as many residents you can. Try to get your own feel for the residents and survey a little bit, and then take that into consideration. And that's kind of what I mean. But do the best you can, but do not think that, you know, I also don't want to see votes being made on like, you know, well, these are the five people that came to me, and so I'm going to vote a certain yep. way. No, because you still have information, and you still have a, a, a fiduciary duty to, to, the whole, to the city as a whole. Too. It's not even, I want to say another thing, too. It's not even just about your constituents in your district, because it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a two, it's, it's twofold, or it's a two-part job, right? It's right. your constituents and also the city as a whole. Same thing that happens with, with state elected officials. Yes, they're trying to look out for their district in, in whichever county they help represent, but they're also taking votes on what they feel is best, best. for the state of Florida as a whole. Yep. And so, but I do encourage strongly, like, look, I tell you all the time what I do for my bosses. We, you know, in the office, we look at all the emails, we look at them. We're more impacted by those, obviously, that come from our district because that's who we represent. I don't represent somebody in Broward County. They have their own representative for that. But we look at it from time to time and we kind of go, okay, it's fine. Um, but we look at our residents because those are the ones who are voting for, for either for my boss or for another member from a different county, whatever the case may be. And we take into consideration what they're saying. However, there is a reality that if there's a philosophical difference and the vast majority of people voted for this individual, then he, is, he or she is probably going to be voting in a way. Same thing happens, like, say, in, in certain parts of Broward County. I could take two different counties, one Republican, one Democrat, or individuals within that representing, and they will take into consideration if the minority, happen, if the minority happens to be a Republican in that, in, that, in that county, then the Democrat will take into consideration, but he or she will probably still end up voting that, the way. And that would be true if the people were provided with factual information in which to vote on you know well and, listen and it happens and all you and you're right dana and i'll just tell you looks and all you listen all my expectation of you ever is a city commissioner anybody on that dies is, is you do the best you can with the information provided 
Sometimes you may not be always. We were provided great fucking information and still didn't do the right well, thing. Well, see, and that's a challenge because you're right. Because there are times, even it happen, I see it happen in Tallahassee. Sometimes information comes at the very last minute, and then you have to figure out, okay, how do I maneuver this now? Because new information came to us last minute, and how do we make an adjustment to the bill, or do we just move forward and see if there's a way to correct it the following year? And that happens sometimes. There's, and there's, there's, there's an, and I'll say this: I see that happen where there's an admission, like, hey, look, we're moving forward with the bill. We had some good ideas from some individuals that came from the audience or members from the public they raised some concerns and you know what i've already told them i've seen this happen i've told them this bill's going to move forward a certain way however i'm committing to you that i want to work on fixing this next year and yep. i told them that and that i respect tremendously and it does happen i know some folks doesn't think it happens in tallahassee but it does happen i see it publicly happening in tallahassee on both sides republican or democrat because we don't always we don't always get it right 100 percent. but when you're given to your point all the information and you still go it a completely like, <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't understand the vote. I don't understand why the city commission went with Marsha again. Once I again, think, I just. Listen, I think that it would be <laughs> helpful if everyone stated their reasons for, for voting so that at least they could be answered. I'd love to, to hear their reason. reasons for it because, man. I think that we have that responsibility. <laughs> and here's the thing. I'm going to hear a lot of. Uh, uh, Marsha uh, 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 would be, a, could be a fit for a city. I'm not saying that, that yeah. but not for Deltona, not the challenges that we have now. We're about to have to answer to St. John's for some decisions we made during the flood, you know. Okay. And, and listen, I'm going to say this lastly on the matter is that <clears throat> sometimes you get so busy working in your business, you don't, you can't properly work on your business. And Deltona mm -hmm. needs a lot of work peripherally. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we don't have that representation. We don't have proactivity. And that's always going to be something that stifles us, uh, stifles yeah. our growth, stifles our respect, stifles a, a lot of things that we could be doing. And and I'm just sad. I'm sad that we didn't get the, you know, prestige or the ability to yeah. <coughs> move forward. You know what I mean? I will say this. I think after you had left, I think the mayor made a comment about talking about that like, he wants to see some sort of I, – and I. Maybe I, mi maybe I misheard her, and if I did, I apologize to everybody in the audience, but I'll just say this. Is that I thought I heard him say something that he wants a vision for Deltona, um, you know, coming from the city manager and so forth, and I was like, hey, great. I mean, that's, but here's my challenge, though. I feel like with Deltona, and there's a bunch of, there's a number of cities I've seen throughout the state do this as well, too, um, but I feel, because I hear from other folks, too, kind of going, oh, my God, my city's just, you know, crazy, right? I feel like we provide a vision, and then we don't follow through with it. So collectively, you all have to decide if this is the this is what you, how you all want to move. Mm -hmm. If this is the foundation you want to provide for future elected officials, then it's hey, everybody can do the little you know jib jabs during political season. I get it, it happens. But when you hey, but when you get up there, what then are you contributing to that vision that was laid as a foundation from others? And we don't do that. It's like we get we get a vision, the next crew that comes in. They scrap the whole damn thing. We're moving in a different direction. And I go, okay, all right, well, okay, folks. All right, I'll give you that much. All right, so you want to go in a different direction? Fine, oh, okay, go in a different direction, fine. No, no. I'll buy it. But you know what happens four years later or two years somewhere in between there? Somebody doesn't like the vision anymore? Boom, hey, we're gone, new vision. I'm like, what the fuck? And I see this play every so often. I'm kind of going, what are we doing here? And it, we don't commit. And I will tell you, residents, let me tell you something. Have you ever gone through our beautiful city? And I say that, and, and, and so I'm sorry, let me say that. I, I step back. I don't say that facetiously because we do have, I've seen other cities too. Let me tell you, some of them are shithole cities. I'm sorry. And Deltona, contrary to popular belief, is not a shithole city. We, there's a lot of beauty in, in, the, in the city of Deltona. But let me tell you something. When you go through our city, have you ever wondered why it's just a hodgepodge of shit throughout the whole city? And you're kind of, man, it, make, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I made it come to somebody. Years ago, Deltona Boulevard, had you done it right, you could have rezoned, you could have run, redid all Deltona Boulevard because that was supposed to be the original kind of quote-unquote downtown for Deltona. You could have redone all that and focus your energies on that, but we didn't. We let it go. I'm sorry. Mayor John at the time, let it languish, whatever. We're a bedroom community. We did, we're We're a bedroom community until guess what? Until shit starts happening. We start developing, growing. Now we're like, now we got a younger um, generation that's coming through, right? Deltona's demographics have changed. And now it's like, well, now shit, now we're kind of stuck. What are we going to do now? Well, okay, so that's commit then to developing what's left. But they screwed that up. So now we're developing what's left of what's left of what's left. And I just kind of go, Oh my God, Deltona, you guys are giving me a heart attack here. My, da, 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 da. Yeah. Well, let's do each other. Here. Yeah, it's, it's going pretty fast. I'm just saying, 
you know, we've been doing this for years, and I'm just, and I've been seeing this for years. And to Pat's point, and you know, and I've said it before, and I've told her when she was here, hey, I didn't always agree with you with the issue with the trail stuff, but I, I thank you for sticking with it. That mm -hmm. was just one piece of what I think she was trying to bring, mm -hmm. and I finally get it today. Um, and she committed to it. And, you know, all I'm asking for my city is, can y'all make a decision on something? No, and we just can't. I can commit to no, it, please. We can't. And stop with the shenanigans. No, it we seems can't. I just kind of go, no. my God. And there's, a, and don't get me wrong, there's a whole Howland Boulevard, I 4 area. I get it, but I just keep feeling like something's going to happen along the way and something's going to pop up out of nowhere and some news is going to come out about somebody. Like they, I mean, oh God, there was times that they talked about, oh, Dennis and Caballero, yeah, we're into it and land deals and blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to make money. They could kill us about the city and, oh, this is why this deal's happening. This is why this deal's happening. I'm kind of going, folks, pay attention to some of the deals that are going down because. I think there's a lot of good in some of that, but there's also probably a lot of shenanigans going on in between all that nonsense. And I just kind of go, what are we doing? Like, I get it, man. I'm always out for, listen, I'm all for people making a buck. You know, you live in the city of Deltona, you know, you're out there, you're busting your ass, you work down in Orlando, you work in Daytona Beach, or you work someplace else, or you work here in Deltona, right? You work in Orange City. I'm all for people making a buck, man. I just, to me, it's always, but let's also at times think about the. <coughs> let's the, PYI. You know what that is? No. Protect your investment. Yeah, and 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 just, but but also think about the but the greater good of the city. Yeah, I know that sounds socialist, but I'm not a socialist by no means. We're not doing that. But We're I not think about we that. need to think about the greater good of the city. And We're then not what, about that. And then what are what is our partnership and relationship with others around us as well? I will tell you this. I was at a and this is just, you know, city commissioners think about this and just everybody in general. I heard a comment being made once before about oh you know not Deltona. And I just, I chuckled for a second, and I go, oh, God. <laughs> Not in Deltona, mind you, outside of the, outside the city limits. And I, and I just sat there, it was just like, oh. and I just, and, and just, it's the word that gets out there. Yeah, I know we got some people, and every city has a few people that, like, go off about whatever, and so forth and so on. But, you know, uh, to me, when I see little things happening on that diet, I kind of go, oh, my God, folks. And, and there are people who, are point, who recognize it for what it is. Whoa, 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 how the hell did that happen so quick? You know, and we're supposed to have sunshine. Now that said, I will also tell you before, I'm not a big fan of sunshine. I'm not in, in, in the in the in the in the sense, in the pure sense of what it is today. I do believe that one-on-one -on -one commission meetings should happen, so that way they can work through some of these issues from time to time. Because um, I think it's important to do that. I mean, I see we do it all the time in Tallahassee, and I just go sunshine's a little bit different, a little bit different in Tallahassee. And what I'll just say, I see members talking. I see Republicans, Republicans. I see Republicans, and Democrats. I mean, hell, I make meetings all the time for my boss with Democrats who want to come in talk about criminal justice issues, and I give them all the time in the world because I, hey, they're a member and they have every right to go into the office and ask. You know, whether it happens or not, a different story, but at least there's an opportunity to talk about, and they get to make the pitch to the boss, mm -hmm. I mean, to the chair, and say, hey, chair, I want to bring up my bill and me tell you the reasons why. Mm -hmm. Okay, either we can work on it, and look, and through his committee, already two, I think two Democrat bills have gone through. Um, by a particular Democrat from South Florida, and he liked the bill. He says, okay, there's merit to the bill, and he's had conversations with up and down the leadership and saying, hey, I think the bill has merit, even if we got to fix it a little bit, right? I don't see that happening locally, and that's what Sunshine prevents sometimes. Why well, I'm always not the big fan of it, uh, big, biggest fan of it, but, you know, that said, uh, I know I've been droning on a little bit, folks, and I apologize, but it's don't just... Don't apologize. I just, I'm just trying to express a little frustration because I see this stuff. I've seen some of the commission meetings over, over the last year or two, and I'm just kind of like, you know, from time to time, you, you and I have talked privately sometimes about... I've told you before, hey, look, just, you know, sometimes either take it easy or just don't whatever and just pick and choose your battles, Dana. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you to be effective as an elected official. But I do also understand from your perspective, it does get very frustrating when you're sitting there yeah. kind of going, folks, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? We can't even commit to a process. Jeez. <laughs> Mr. Process, we can't even, even Mr. Process, we can't even commit to a process. I'm not even going to hate you for that today. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I don't want to drone on. Listen, yeah. the, the city of... Anyways. Deltona marches on, and yeah. uh, I just want to thank the people for showing up. Yeah, you know, continuing to show up in the face of yeah, it feeling like we don't care. But um, I know I I'm know. going to um, I'm going to wrap up today yeah. early. I, I get I'm it. I'm going to go home and go night night. I get it. I know you know you're not feeling 100 yeah. percent up to it, so I get it. And I uh, <clears throat> I told it. So folks, just I wanted because a lady commented one time about being nice to you with the cigar stuff, mm -hmm. and I did let it go out. I know Dana, I got a sense, and she, you know, she kind of let me know a little bit in her in her way. Just, uh, you know, hey, let's cigar, because she's what feeling a lot of it, which yeah. is fine. I'll always listen to her. She's my co-host. Uh, obviously, uh, we're partners here on this, mm -hmm. and I want to be respectful of Dana. Um, but uh, once again, I will say this, that, yeah, wrapping up early is probably a good thing, so that way you can. 
Yeah. You can feel a little better, my yeah. dear. <laughs> I will indeed. I, will I know indeed. it's been a tough week. <laughs> it has. <laughs> it has. Listen, people, we're always going to talk about what's true, what's real, in an unfiltered and full-flavored kind of way, trying to keep it respectful. And just remember that uh, right in, call in, come see us. We'd love to have you. And remember that if it's important to you. It's important to us, folks. Thank peace you. out. The Smoking Truth Podcast, its owners and sponsors, take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guest. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of Mike and Mike Productions or the podcast providers, and opinions between talk show hosts may differ. It is not our intent to libel, incite, or hurt anyone's feelings. We invite you to write the show's host, Dana McCool, with any feedback or suggestions you have for their shows. These broadcasts are presented and made public as entertainment in the hope that they will be entertaining to the audience.